All right, the meeting is now live. Thank you and good afternoon and welcome to the Scottsdale City Council Subcommittee on Economic, Economic Development. It is Thursday, January 6th, 2022 at four o'clock. Until further notice, the Council Subcommittee on Economic Development meetings will be held electronically. The Council Subcommittee on Economic Development meetings are available on Scottsdale's YouTube channel to allow the public to virtually attend and listen and view the meeting in progress. Simply go to scottsdaleaz.gov and search live stream. Click on Scottsdale YouTube channel, scroll to upcoming live streams, and then you can select this meeting. Uh, spoken comment is accepted on agenda items. Request to speak forms must be submitted no later than 90 minutes before the start of the meeting, and that can be done on the city's website. Written comment is also being accepted for both agendized and non-agendized items and should be submitted electronically at least 90 minutes prior to the start of the meeting. These comments will be emailed to council members on the Economic Development Subcommittee and posted online prior to the meeting. You can submit written comments also on the city's website. Members of the subcommittee will participate in the meeting telephonically and we'll begin with a call to order and a roll call. Councilwoman Milhaven. Here. Councilwoman Janik. Councilwoman Janik. Okay, I'm here. There. Thank you. And Councilwoman Whitehead uh, indicated she would not be present today. All right, thank you. And then uh, I'll note that I can't see who's raised their hand. So uh, I guess if folks wanna speak, we'll just do the best we can um, and just speak up. Um, so then the, the next uh, item is approval of the September 9th, 2021 minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. I second. Uh, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Thank you. And then moving on to the next item, the state of commercial real estate. Uh, Madam Chair, we've had a change in the order, if it is okay with you. If we can move the state of the commercial real estate to the last item on the agenda right after the economic development update, and we start with uh, item number three. All righty then, workforce development overview. Great. Madam Chair, if I could introduce this, you know, we, uh, we've got an agenda that is um, designed to provide the subcommittee with kind of a state of the uh, the economy right now in, in two, two areas that are of, of great significance is uh, what is happening in the commercial real estate market, both here in Scottsdale and in the, in the Phoenix metro area, but obviously workforce development and what is happening in the shifting demands in, in the, uh, the workforce. So we wanted to make sure that we provide an update. We have Don Montz, who is the business services representative of the Maricopa County at work. And with that, I'll hand it over to Don. Thank you, Josh. Um, the screen has not moved. I was told my presentation would be ready for me when I began. We good? No, I think maybe next screen. There we go. There we go. That's our logo. Um, First off, thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Um, again, my name is Don Motes. I am with uh, Maricopa County. I'm with Arizona at Work and the Arizona at Work brand, just so everyone's clear, I know it gets confusing sometimes. The Arizona at Work brand includes uh, the state of Arizona through Department of Economic Services. It also includes in Maricopa County, our agency, which is Maricopa County, we're part of Maricopa County Human Services. And within the city of Phoenix, it also includes the city of Phoenix Workforce Agency. So we all fall under the brand of Arizona at work. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, uh, Arizona at work is the state statewide workforce development network that helps employers of all sizes recruit, develop and retain the best workers. Um, as I said, within Maricopa County, um, the Arizona at Work brand includes Maricopa County, City of Phoenix, and the state of Arizona. The city of Phoenix operates three workforce centers within the city. Their locations are Maryvale, North, which is around Sunny Slope, and South, which is, I believe, around Central and Broadway. 
the county operates two workforce centers. Um, our newest center is in the city of Glendale. And then I operate out of the city, um, the town of Gilbert. Next slide, please. There we go. There's the locations for our uh, workforce centers, uh, Gilbert Road and Gilbert, Olive, which is about 43rd Avenue and Olive, and then the three uh, City of Phoenix locations. Next slide, please. We also have, and this is becoming a growing trend that we're pretty excited about. We're starting to partner um, with a lot more cities on having satellite locations. At the current time, we have a resource center in Surprise, Wickenburg, which is actually one of our more active centers, uh, Tempe at the Tempe Public Library, and the Scottsdale location, which we have partnered with the city for some time now at the Vista Del Camino, Camino Center. Um, I don't know if you know her, but Sheila Williams operates that center and does a wonderful job. I love working with Sheila. Um, very soon, we have not officially announced it yet, but we will have locations both in Mesa and Glendale. So we expect those to be open, I would say probably within the next couple of months. We also have what we call access points at numerous locations. I did include a link there if anybody wants to check it out. The only thing I would caution is that the level of services does vary quite a bit from center to center. So you would need to get more information on what services are available at particular access points. Next slide, please. Our main programs within Maricopa County is our adult adult dislocated worker. That covers the majority of our adult job seekers. Um, the adult job seeker would generally be somebody who is looking to change jobs or is currently out of the workforce, while the dislocated worker program would cover people who have been laid off through no fault of their own, um, people looking to re-enter the workforce that have been out of the workforce for a while. There are several individuals that would qualify under the dislocated worker banner. We also have a very robust apprenticeship program, which I highly encourage you to check out. We have a business services program, which I am a member of, which works with businesses and job seekers throughout Maricopa County, all the way from basically Gila Bend to Apache Junction and all points in between. Um, we have a youth services program. Uh, the general age of those programs would fall between 16 and 24. There is a lot of focus on retraining and or training in the youth services program. And we also have a smart justice program, which is a reentry program for individuals who have some sort of justice involved background. All of our services are funded, provided uh, through federal funding through the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. I, if you've heard people refer to WIOA, that's what they're referring to. And those funds come through the Department of Labor and are administered by the state of Arizona through Department of Economic Security. Next slide, please. Our targeted industries as of right now are finance and insurance. Um, we work with State Farm, we work with Progressive, we work with Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, um, and much, much more. These Valley has a very, very heavy insurance, finance and insurance presence. Uh, another one of our targeted sectors are IT, or as the feds would call it, information. Uh, we do a lot of work within the healthcare industry. We work with Banner. Um, we work with Abrazo, we work with Honor, we work with Dignity, we work with uh, smaller agencies. Healthcare also includes behavioral health, and we work with a lot of behavioral health agencies. We work within manufacturing, transportation and logistics, and construction. Now, our targeted industries, for lack of, for more clarity, the, the thing that would differentiate between other industries is if someone is seeking retraining within our targeted sectors, um, they would be eligible for a higher grant amount than in a non-targeted sector. But as far as my job and the business services team, we work with employers from all sectors across the board. 
Next slide, please. So who do we serve? Within Job Seekers, um, we provide access to vocational training grants. Uh, we work with training providers um, in multiple industries. We work with universities. We work with community colleges. Uh, we provide career counseling, direct job leads, job referrals to qualified job seekers. As I said before, we have our apprenticeship program. We provide labor market information. Uh, we provide a robust group of uh, trainings from in a wide range of employability skills, uh, resume assistance, interviewing skills. And then we also uh, provide, we're one of the providers uh, that can offer the Arizona Career Readiness Credential. Uh, for employers, we offer labor market information. We provide them access to Arizona Job Connection, with the, which is the workforce uh, job board, for lack of a better term. We provide candidate referrals. We do a wide range of hiring events, although that has slowed down dramatically due to COVID. We offer partner introductions. If we have a training provider or an agency that wants to partner with a specific employer, we can definitely provide those introductions. We're an information clearinghouse to a lot of different uh, information about the workforce. Uh, we provide business space. If anybody were to need business space and for whatever reason they're, they can't uh, access that themselves, we provide that at no charge. And we also offer rapid response services uh, which is basically to help any um, impacted job, uh, impacted employees that are, for whatever reason, not their own, they're a victim of layoffs or downsizing. Next slide, please. Uh, we have a really expansive network. We work with the state of Arizona, city of Phoenix. We work with a wide range of economic development agencies. We work with college universities, training providers, as I said before, a very wide range of not-for-profits. We work with a lot of different veterans groups that are advocating on behalf of either those leaving service or um, could be you know, disabled individuals. Um, we work with a lot of vocational rehabilitation providers, re-entry agencies, school districts, trade associations, trade unions, and we also work with a lot of other county workforce offices in other counties. We do a lot of work. We partner a lot with Pinal County. Um, we do a fair amount of work with Pima County, but I would say Pinal is probably the county that we partner with the most. Next slide, please. Here is a list of our current staff. I do want to say that this is my last week with Maricopa County. So uh, my name will not be included on further uh, county rosters. Uh, I'm going to go work for ASU. Looking forward to that. So um, Kevin Dumpcom is our supervisor. I included his contact information on the top. I uh, would highly recommend, uh, Josh, if you're wanting any type of specific projects or anything like that, Kevin would probably be your best point, and he can um, kind of direct who to send that request to. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, that pretty much uh, is what I was going to cover, and I am available to answer any questions um, you might have. Um, hello, this is Betty, Councilwoman Betty Janik. Can you hear me? I can, Betty. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. I hope you're good. healthy. Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I do have two questions. Sure. Um, are, do you provide help when the people are trying to fill in the job application forms? Is that one of your services as well? We do as much as we can. Um, Due to COVID, our, our, we, we are still open, but um, due to COVID, we're not seeing as much traffic as we generally would uh, during normal times. But yeah, um, we do have staff available in our centers, in our resource areas that um, they do from time to time provide those services, yes. Okay, then are the jobs that we're talking about both full and part-time, and could you just give me a rough idea of what a salary, an hourly salary range would be? For Betty, the that, is, of jobs? That, 
that really ranges. Um, we work with, as far as job seekers, we work with uh, entry level job seekers all the way up to, to professionals, to okay. degree individuals. And as far as the different employers we work with, uh, we work with uh, companies that are looking to hire experienced engineers, uh, healthcare okay. professionals, um, not doctors so much, but definitely registered nurses and what have you, okay. all the way down to like entry level warehouse positions. So um, it's a gamut. It, it's it's across the board. And what I would say is, I'm sure Josh can echo. Um, we are seeing the exact same thing that employers are seeing right now, and that is um, unfortunately a dearth of job seekers. Um, we are just not seeing the job seekers were. We're not sure where they're at or what's happening. Uh, everybody has opinions, but in, in reality, no one really knows at this point. This is all this is all new to everyone. Okay, all right. Thank you. That's great information. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, hi. This is uh, Councilwoman Millhaven. Don, thank you for your great presentation and your your last comment actually uh, dovetails nicely with my question, which was, you know, we're seeing on the national news about record mm -hmm. resignations and, and received help wanted signs all over the place and was curious if you had a sense of, of uh, what we're seeing in Arizona. I heard you say a dearth of uh, job seekers, but wondering what, uh, what else you're seeing in terms of those kinds of trends. Um, well, the trend we're seeing right now is that we're just, the, the, the labor participation rate that we're experiencing is extremely low. Um, we are not seeing any uptick in any of our sectors that we're working with right now. The, the problems that employers are having are truly across the board. And, and I'm not talking about just entry level positions where you historically might see um, employers having trouble. This, this applies to professional positions. This applies to healthcare providers. It applies, it applies to manufacturers. Um, you know, we've all heard about the, in the transportation industry, we're seeing that as well. And the employers reaching out to us are all saying the same thing, you know, where are the job seekers? And um, we just don't have an answer right now. Thank you, Don. Wish I had better news. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, yes. I got the, the one silver lining in all this for the people that are looking for work um, this is the time. I mean, and that's and that's a message we get across to all job seekers who are reaching out to us. It's um, if, if you are looking to change careers, if you're looking to make a move, now is the time to do it because um, employers are really having a hard time. And I and I think that a lot of them have kind of widened their parameters as far as what they're what they'll accept as far as an employee. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's Betty Jan Councilwoman Janik. Thank you. No problem. All right, Mr. Millar. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, Councilman. Anything more? Or are we ready to move on? Nothing more on this item. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll move on to our next item, which is HUUB or HUB Business Support Program. Yeah, Madam Chair, um, you know, if I can introduce this item as well, uh, you know, this is an important program that you're going to see, be seeing a, a great deal about um, in, in the coming weeks. We're getting ready to launch uh, very soon. And Deanna Owens, um, who's a human services manager with the city, was uh, redeployed to economic development uh, to help us get this program launched with the use of CARES Act funds. And it's really a continuation of the, the, the small business support that the city has offered um, uh, throughout the pandemic. And, you know, this is taking it to a different level, talking, uh, providing consulting, um, training and coaching um, and availability of grants and, and that's available. So, so uh, Deanna is going to walk us through what that program looks like and what you can expect to see in the coming weeks that we uh, are getting ready to launch on. Good afternoon, Councilwoman Janik and Council Member Millhaven. I'm Deanna Owens and I'll provide you with an overview of the Choose Scottsdale Hub program. What is Hub? Hub is a software technology program whose purpose is to assist Scottsdale small businesses 
with accelerating their recovery efforts by offering resources and technical support services via an online platform. So Choose Scottsdale Hub consists of resources, services, and technology. The Hub technology was designed and created by a local company called Cahoots. The city has funded the Hub program for two years using CARES Act funds. During COVID in 2020 and 2021, economic development was able to provide direct support to hundreds of Scottsdale businesses through programs like the Small Business Assistance Center that help businesses um, navigate the PPP and IDLE application process, the local FIRST training program, and the uh, Reimburse Scottsdale Grant Fund. HUB is a continuation of those programs. So the HUB project was birthed out of the need to continue supporting the small business owner recover from the impacts of COVID. HUB is another way economic development will continue to provide additional support to those businesses. So Scottsdale is not the first city to use the HUB platform. HUB has been already implemented in other cities like Phoenix, Mesa, and Gilbert. Uh, Avondale and Goodyear are in the process of bringing the HUB to their cities. Next slide. The HUB platform has a number of uh, beneficial features. The learning library includes uh, free training and informational webinars on business related topics like finance, legal, marketing, uh, business planning, et cetera. Live workshops feature, uh, allow us to notify businesses of upcoming live workshops. There's a calendar that keeps businesses aware of relevant local business events. There's current and upcoming grant and funding opportunities that will be listed in the hub with links to direct businesses to a site where they can obtain more information on how to apply for those grants and uh, funding opportunities. The online business to business engagement. There's a social media feed that allows businesses to connect to one another the one-on-one -on -one technical assistance program is a huge benefit to the small business owner. The city's paying for uh, businesses to have access to free consulting services. The city will grant consulting hours to each business. Once the hours are granted, the business can select from a pool of consultants and schedule services directly with the consultant using the, plub, the hub platform. Through the built-in data collection feature, economic development will be able to retrieve performance metrics using the hub reporting tools. Next slide, please. Value added benefits. These are the key benefits for businesses that participate in the Choose Scottsdale Hub program. Businesses will be able to build competency in whatever area they need to improve on which will translate to improved competitiveness. The program promotes business resiliency and accelerates business recovery. The hub platform is a mechanism for sharing business resources and information, as I explained earlier. Businesses will have access to city-sponsored technical assistance support via the one-on-one -on -one professional consulting services and a city-sponsored two-year membership to Arizona Small Business Association, is an, that's an added benefit. So every business that participates in the HUB program will receive a two-year Arizona SBA membership that's paid for by the city. Economic development has set several HUB goals and they are to serve at least 200 Scottsdale businesses, host live virtual workshops and webinars, and sponsor approximately 800 hours of one-on-one -on -one consulting assistance. So the overall goal is to provide assistance that will help with revitalizing and equipping small businesses so they have a better chance of thriving in this current environment. Next slide, please. Our rollout schedule, Choose Scottsdale Hub will launch on January 25th at 10 a.m. This will be a virtual launch where the mayor and Rob Millar will be uh, introducing the program and its benefits. 
Businesses will also be invited at this time to register for the program. Our marketing um, campaign will begin prior to the launch date of January 25th and continue. The onboarding and orientation with businesses will start after the January 25th launch invitation. And that concludes the overview of the Two Scottsdale Hub program. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Have you already, this is Councilwoman Janik, have you already started your marketing effort for this and your advertising on social media? We have actually started it today with an email communication that went out. Um, and we do have plans uh, for uh, other communications um, on our e-newsletter, uh, lots of uh, social media marketing. Uh, so we have uh, lots of exciting marketing plans uh, to put forth. Okay. And as far as the emails, um, how did you generate your email list as to who gets the notifications initially? Well, we started off with the economic development team. Um, okay. We collaborated and, and determined some of the small businesses that we currently um, have information on and some business partners that we felt would uh, assist us in getting the information out to other small businesses. Okay, thank you. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Deanna, thank you so much for the great presentation. So this looks like this is uh, sort of new, but an extension of what the Economic Development Department has done already. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then Deanna, say more about what your role will be in supporting this program. My role, I am uh, like Rob Millar had mentioned, I am the community services manager. Um, so I am in the Economic Development Department to work on this project and several others. So I will be, um, I've assisted with trying to get this program launched. So I was somewhat of a program manager. Mm -hmm. Going forward, I will assist the businesses with uh, an orientation, getting them registered, um, assisting with the social media communication, kind of like uh, what you would see on, on any social media feed. So I will uh, work in uh, assisting in marketing and, and hopefully uh, engaging businesses to uh, communicate business to business online. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll be really managing any questions that they have and trying to assist them, um, uh, approving the, the consulting hours uh, and those sorts of things. Great. Well, as we move through this after the launch, it'd be great to get an update at a future meeting on yes. the, the kinds of involvement you're seeing and maybe some of the issues that, that we're seeing that, that businesses are uh, challenged with that we're able to help. Most so definitely. I'd be happy to. That would be wonderful. So thank you. It looks like a wonderful program. Thank you. All right. If there are no other questions or comments, thank you, Deanna. We'll move on to the economic development update. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if I could also mention, just going back to the hub program, we will be sending uh, information directly to the council on this program early next week in advance of the official rollout. So you'll have that information. And we, as always, we appreciate your help in pushing that out through your channels as well. And uh, one of the benefits of this program is that they, they have an exceptional um, tracking and reporting Features. So we look forward to coming back to you at the next subcommittee meeting and, and um, providing that information to you. Deanna has done a phenomenal job, even though we're contracting this out. Sometimes contracting things out requires a little more um, work on the front end. And so Deanna has been on board for a few months and has really done a great job of getting that ready to go. So I appreciate that. And we look forward to giving you some more updates as time goes on. Um, Wonderful. Thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you. All right, next slide. So I wanted to give you uh, some updates on some things we're seeing in, in the marketplace and some of our performance measures and give and highlight um, projects that we're working on and some things you'll see over the, over the coming months. Uh, these are our performance metrics that we uh, continually share with the subcommittee about things that we're working on. We're, we're halfway through our fiscal year. 
uh, uh, just finished uh, Q2, uh, uh, the fourth quarter in for the calendar year. But for our purposes, fiscal year, we've had two two businesses uh, uh, that we've that we've been actively engaged in that we recruited, uh, we are competed for, uh, that result in 347 jobs. Um, average wage is just over 80,000, so that's a it's a, it's a healthy average wage. Uh, economic impact of, of 739 million. Our Chew Scottsdale um, sessions have have done really well. We're at uh, just over eighteen thousand, and as 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 we've talked about before, making sure that we're supporting our current businesses is uh, remains remains very critical. And we've been able to reach out to and meet with and interact with uh, fifty businesses uh, so far this fiscal year. Um, the hub program is going to broaden that opportunity for us because you know, one of the things that drew us to the hub program was that a lot of small businesses uh, that are starting off um, may not necessarily want to communicate with us in the traditional way of an in-person meeting or a Teams or a, a Zoom call, that they, they interact more uh, electronically in, uh, via their phone or computer or through webinars. And so this is going to be able to broaden our reach to meet more of our companies that are within the city of Scottsdale. Um, in, terms of, in terms of future projects, we've got um, 37 leads uh, that we are working on currently in nine projects and projects are those that have told us that uh, we are either uh, in, the, in the top three or the top two um, locations under consideration. So we, uh, we treat those a little differently than leads. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of business licenses, we're going to we're going to continue to report on this. It, it, it's a it's an indicator of, of activity. We don't interact with every company that locates in the city of Scottsdale. We we um, proactively pursue and compete for companies in our target markets. But there's obviously a lot of companies that move in and out of Scottsdale that get business licenses. It's a good barometer of overall activity. So we have here just as for comparison's sake, uh, FY fiscal year 21 20 compared to last fiscal year. And these are the, 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 the categories that uh, tax and license uses for classifying the type. So we're not listing every type of business license, but we're listing the most, um, uh, the ones that have the highest number of new business licenses. You can see for this fiscal year, halfway through, we're at 221 new licenses compared to last year, a total of 803. We'll see if the trend uh, continues for uh, the remainder of the fiscal year, but if it does, you'll see that we're gonna be a little bit behind um, in terms of what we did the previous fiscal year. Next slide. Occupancy rates, uh, it, it, we're seeing uh, numbers that uh, really haven't moved that dramatically. Industrial Ooh. is uh, uh, one, uh, I'm sorry, 1.7%. Uh, and these are based on last month, December last month, 1.7% uh, vacancy rate. That number is is always really low because we don't have a lot of uh, industrial in our community. So uh, it's difficult to compare that to the Phoenix Metro because we're always really low. Office is at 14.7%, still in a very healthy range in retail at 4.9%. Uh, when you compare that to the Phoenix Metro area, again, mm -hmm. not not drastic uh, changes. And I think Mr. Mr. Mena is going to talk about some of the trends that he's seeing um, within his company and give you a little more insight on what's happening there. Next slide. Uh, in terms of department updates, we are uh, very fortunate to announce that uh, Kirsten uh, Hushigan joined our team as our marketing and communications manager. She joined us the week of Thanksgiving, so she uh, has been on board just for a short period of time. And this, this position was vacant since last April. And so we were working with a contract, uh, contract with a company to help us in that, in the, in that term. And, and with Kirsten joining our team, we are fully staffed, which is the first time that's happened in uh, just over three years. So we're super excited that Thanks. Kirsten is on, on our team. She Obviously, we're meeting virtually, so we wanted to have a picture so you can see who Kirsten is. You'll be interfacing quite a bit with her. 
um, pretty much everything we do in economic development has a marketing and communications uh, uh, attachment to that. And so uh, we're super thrilled to have her and, and with Deanna on board to help us. We're, we're, we're at a really good pace with our team at being um, at seven. So we're, we're, we're pretty excited. I look forward to meeting Kirsten in person. The Economics, I uh, wanted to update you on that. It was a conference that was held uh, here in Scottsdale in the first week of December. And, and really what this was, was it's a, a, a site selectors from around the country and econ development organizations from around, around the country. They had just about 200 attendees came in to talk about what's happening with econ development. Um, and probably more important for us as econ development uh, is that we had the opportunity to expose Scottsdale to site selectors from around the country. They, the, the host hotel was a swirl across the street. And we had a lot of engagement opportunities throughout, uh, throughout Old Town. Uh, and throughout the uh, two and a half day event. And uh, we had some site selectors who had been to Scottsdale for, um, for recreation and had not had us on their radar for business development and were pleasantly surprised that they saw, a different, they saw Scottsdale through a different lens. And so it turned out to be a very good opportunity that we did sponsor a portion of that conference. And we look forward to hopefully being in the rotation of that in the years to come next year. I think, believe it's in Columbus, Ohio. So uh, good exposure for Scottsdale. We are in the preliminary stage. Excuse me, the preliminary stages of um, economic de developing an economic development day. We're looking at this spring, and really, what we want to do is create create a day where we can um, pull together community stakeholders. We're going to definitely involve the economic development subcommittee members, um, and, and the chamber is going to partner with us on this. That we can show what is happening in the community, all the way from Sky Song, all the way up to State Land, and everything in between. Um, most likely, going to be a bus. Uh, tour that will you know allow us to to physically get out into the community, um, uh, bring in uh, community and business leaders and developers to talk about things that are happening, and just spend the day talking about uh, things that and, and really hopefully developing ambassadors so people see the importance of of all these projects and hopefully will be more uh, involved in them and help us be championing some of these uh, econ development activities. So more information on that uh, in the coming months. Um, state land. There's a couple of things that are happening with state land. Uh, Bell and Pima, there's 124 acres that is set for auction on March 3rd. And sorry about that. Um, it's set for March 3rd. Uh, and that is a parcel that has gone to auction I believe two times before in the past three to four years, uh, but that is set to go to auction on March 3rd. The Dorito parcel, which is about 73, I think 74 acres. Um, we call it Dorito because Dorito is the applicant that put in the, the application for state land is the parcel that runs uh, immediately west of Hayden along the 101 on the south side of the freeway. They did release the appraisal on that parcel the beginning of December. I have not set an auction date, so we look forward to that being probably late spring, um, uh, most likely early summer. Um, and there's continued activity on other parcels within the state land. So things are happening within state land and there's a lot more interest in looking at what development opportunities exist there. Hey Rob, hey Rob. Yes. What's Dorito thinking about doing on that parcel? Uh, we. I, we don't know. I, I, we, we've heard, uh, I talked to him early on, uh, you know, it, he was looking at some sort of mixed use. I will tell you that um, I'm aware that there's other interested parties in that that are looking at um, similar mixed use parcels. So uh, nothing I've seen is going to be um, all retail or all office, um, but I think there's going to be a good mix. Um, we're aware of a couple of folks that may bid on it that we've met with uh, that want, trying to get a good feel for what the city will allow. Um, and so I think, I think that's going to, it's going to, uh, there may be multiple people um, showing up for that auction. Okay. And when you say Bell and Pima, that's really sort of the 101, right? Yes, correct. Run, runs along the east side of the 101. It, it falls under the uh, power lines. That's no, sort of northeast of that intersection? Correct, correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, so lots of good uh, activity on state land, and we are going to be working on some marketing initiatives um, this spring and probably in the summer, um, marketing state land to um, 
prospects around the country because, you know, again, this is this is a key corridor for us. We view this as our corporate corridor with uh, Axon and Nationwide and Choice Hotels. And so we are um, going to be working with the state land department and, and others to uh, proactively market uh, the opportunities that we think uh, c- could go there. Um, business license data. I think I mentioned this at the last subcommittee meeting that it was forthcoming. And I'm, I'm happy to share with you that it's actually happened this week. And it, it is, as I've mentioned before, it, we have in economic development have not had access to business license data in the city, um, meaning that that information was protected by uh, by code, and that and and it was interpreted that we would not be able to have access to to any of that information. And there's about uh, sixteen thousand. Uh, businesses that are licensed in the city of Scottsdale. There's about 22,000 that operate in the city because there's a, a small percentage that are licensed in other cities, but operate here, but about 16,000. Um, we uh, had some recent conversations, meaning uh, in the fall with the new city treasurer, Sonia, and, and talked to her about, you know, would there be a way of, of, of dissecting the data so we don't have access to any private or sensitive information, just address, name of company, um, and contact information. And uh, Sonia and her team uh, were very creative, and Sonia had experienced that when in other communities that she's been with, and, and was able to provide that. So now we have access, and are uploading that data to our to our CRM. So now we've got just under twenty one thousand contacts um, within our CRM. So the, now very exciting for us as economic developers because our reach just went out tremendously more that we ha- uh, couldn't do before. Uh, so pretty excited about that. And then ninety fourth and Bell. The uh, city parcel is set for auction on March 10th. That information has been distributed by our, our capital projects team. Um, we have shared it in multiple forums. Um, so information is getting out. We uh, At this point, we don't know um, who's going to show up, but uh, that is set for March 10th. Uh, next slide, please. And we are, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we've got a lot of things that we're rolling out next next couple of weeks. But yeah. This has been busy. We didn't plan it this way. It just happened to, to happen this way. But our, our, our new brand, and we've talked a lot about this. I know uh, the subcommittee and, and the full council has been involved over the past year. As we finished our strategic plan, we thought this was the perfect time to, to look at our brand and to refresh that. Um, we want it to be uh, more reflective of, of, of our community and to, and, and to be able to have a broader reach and meeting some of our targeted uh, talent, targeted industries and have it be bold and colorful and catching in a sea of, of cities that are, are that we're competing with across the country. And we worked with resident consulting um, for, for many months and tested a bunch of different versions and came up with a, um, a, really, a, a really neat logo that also um, is accompanied by some marketing strategies initiatives that we don't have time to get into today, but you're gonna see them roll out over the next year that uh, really capitalize on um, um, being being fresh and, and having a new look. We're gonna start rolling that out on January 12th. Um, we're, you know, we're gonna be using social media, a website, uh, a lot of marketing to push it out. Um, uh, we, you know, we're, we're, we've got a really fun activity that we're gonna be doing. Um, I'll be contacting each of the council members individually and sharing what that looks like, but we, uh, we think you'll you'll have fun with it and um, you might get a cookie out of it. A little, you probably won't <laughs> uh, So uh, we, 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 we look forward to involving you in that process because the more we can share this, the more that we, we see, think people might get excited about, uh, especially outside of our market, take a fresh look at Scottsdale and create some excitement and buzz around that. Next slide. This just shows you, you know, what our website um, and some of our standard internal documents and some of our external documents will look like. Um, taking the colors and 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 using kind of a creative way of, of presenting it. Um, there's just so many things we can do with this that uh, you know give us a lot of uh, give us a lot of things that we can you know, do on social media that maybe we weren't able to do. We had some challenges with our old graphic, um, the kind of the gradient S. Uh, was, was difficult in, in some meetings. So this is just kind of a flavor of what it'll look like. So more information on that, it will also be coming out in a couple of weeks with our official launch. Next slide. So in terms of upcoming activity, uh, what's gonna take place between now and our next subcommittee meeting, uh, we're gonna be rolling out the brand. Uh, the hub program, as we mentioned, is gonna be um, rolled out and we look forward to next subcommittee giving you an update 
on, on how that's been received and give you some, uh, some updated numbers on that. Um, the website over, uh, is going to be completely overhauled over the next um, six to eight months. Uh, you know, we're working with uh, the, the web design team who is also doing, as you know, the city's website, which is a massive undertaking uh, that's going to take quite some time. But we're working with them and their consultant to also do our .com, our choosegastel.com website. And, and, and it get, again, it's a great opportunity to have our, have our new our, our new logo, our new brand, have our strategic plan, and to revisit how our how our website is laid out, what information do we want to get out there, how do we streamline that, make it make it more efficient. So that'll take place over the next, again, six to eight months, and then we're looking to uh, develop a spring training business appreciation event. We've done this for several years, uh, with the exception of last year because of the pandemic. But we do it. We try and do at least two year spring training or, or two uh, business appreciation events where we bring in business leaders, owners, um, folks that are involved in the community and just you know, thank them for being part of it. Um, and, and our spring training event is, has been uh, the most popular. We've done it in the uh, Charles Lodge and we've done it in the um, suite up on the third baseline. So we're looking forward to doing that and we'll give you more information and invite you to that as well. Next slide. And with that, that completes my presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. That was very nice. It's uh, very positive news and really good to see it. Yep, lots of great activities. Thank you, Rob. So I guess we'll move on to the state of commercial real estate. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, I, and uh, I, Peter should be on. We apologize for having to change yep, this I'm, order a little bit, but yeah, Peter, Peter Mena is one of our, um, our favorite uh, brokers uh, and has been very involved in a lot of efforts we've worked on over the years. And when we said we you know, we really want to have someone come in and provide a, a perspective on what's happening, you know, from from uh, not just a Scottsdale but also looking at you know the region, um, um, Peter was gracious gracious enough to come in and do that. So um, Peter, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. I, I think you guys have my presentation, or we do. We'll advance slides. Okay. Would you? Oh, tell there us. we go. So. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank you for having me. Uh, as Rob said, my name is Peter Mena. I've been uh, with Cushman and Wakefield here in the Valley for about 20 years, and I was asked to talk about the state of the commercial real estate market, in particular, the office market. So if we go to the next slide, I will kind of start off on a macro level, and then I'll work my way into the Phoenix metro area, and then we can specifically talk about Scottsdale and then touch on kind of some predictions of where we, where we think the office is going to end up in the next few years. So next slide. So you've all probably read in the news that Omicron has made companies revisit their back to work strategy. People are pushing out their dates and that's the million dollar question. The million dollar question is when is it going to be safe to go back to the office? And, and I don't think anybody really knows that, but the good news is prior to um, Omicron, about 40% of the global workforce and about 30 to 35% of the US-based workforce had been going back to the office in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, look, this has affected the, the, the this, this pandemic has affected the real estate industry in a negative way. And the silver lining for us today is that while we're still seeing negative absorption, we're seeing the rate of the uh, negative absorption declining. Uh, you know, I think what we're going to see is, is continued, you know, uh, deterioration for the next, you know, year to 18 months. And then, and then we're going to see a bounce back, but it's all going to depend on that million dollar question as to when we're back into the office. But here are some things that we're seeing today that we were not seeing a year ago. We're seeing way more tours. So more companies actually starting to plan their back to work. The size of the tours, so instead of two or 3,000 square foot deals, we're seeing 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 100,000 square foot deals. And then a year ago, we were seeing, you know, people kicking the can down the road looking to do a year extension or a two year extension. The term of the leases are getting larger, which really is a signal to us that, that there are companies that really do want to get back to the office. The last thing I'll mention here is that construction costs are, are going through the roof, just like everything else we're seeing inflation. 
And, and I think what that's going to do is put a little bit of a stall on uh, some of the new development that you'll see in particular for office buildings. I think you'll awful, also see some of those new office buildings that don't have tenant improvements uh, already built out in them are going to be so extremely prohibitive cost-wise to do that tenants are going to look to go to other spaces. In particular, they're going to look at subleases. And I have a few big users out in the market right now in Scottsdale, and they are looking at 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 those types of spaces because they can get furniture for free and it's already built out to a specification that works for them. So we can go to the next slide. So in the Phoenix metro area, we are pretty much back to um, the same levels, vacancy levels we were at um, in the Great Recession. I think what we're gonna see here, um, so just as a kind of a, a, a basis point here, equilibrium in our market is about 16%. Okay, so that means if it's, if it's below that, you'll start to see construction. If it's above it, everything should taper off. So we're well above that. And the vacancy rate for subleases is three, three and a half times what it was um, or what it traditionally is in a, in a normal market at 1%. And you'll see that in the, in the Phoenix market, we've had about 3 million square feet uh, of space given back. But I don't think it's all you know, I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I think that uh, it's going to take us a while, just like it did the last time to work through a lot of this. Um, but I think in this, this go around, when it does happen, I think it's going to turn around really quickly. And that's going to all depend on that million dollar question as to when we get back to work. So next slide. So you'll see the Scottsdale market has fared way better than Metro Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And you can look at some historical numbers on the left-hand side, uh, on the bottom left-hand corner. Um, but we are, you know, four, five, six percent uh, a little higher than, than where we should be or where we were. And we're about 2.8 times higher than the traditional vacancy. But we did see, um, for subleases, but we did see some positive absorption, which is nice. So, you know, Scottsdale is... Uh, a little bit more rosy than, than, than the valley as a whole. So that's something that's nice to take away. Uh, next slide. So we talked about the million dollar question. We talked about back to work. I like this slide because it talks about that 40% of the people, once we get to herd immunity and they feel safe, they wanna get back to the office. In three months, that number after that event happens, 60% will be back in the office. And then after six months, we'll get to 70%. And then within a year, it'll be 80 to 90%. So people want to get back to the office. Now, they may not come back in the same cadence or form that they did before. Some companies will want their employees in full-time. Some, some, some will allow their employees to work from home indefinitely, and others will do a hybrid. And some will do a combination of all three. So you know, when we look at you know, large global corporations, nearly three-fourths of them, expect to have their employees back in the office two to four times a week. Um, you know, it's going to be a different way that they use the office. It's not going to necessarily be come to the office to do your job. It's going to be probably more so surrounding collaboration and teamwork, and people will come in for those reasons, and then they'll leave. Now, we're all going to see um, work from home increase from six to 12%. And you might think, well, that's going to really be a drag on on the office, but it really isn't because the knowledge-based workforce is supposed to grow significantly in the next five to 10 years. And that will, that will offset those individuals who are working from home. So the takeaways from this are, I think that the future of the Scottsdale office will be strong in the long term. Um, it's, it's, it's improving and it's not, it's not getting to where we need to be today yet. Um, subleases will remain elevated for the foreseeable future until we can, we can get through all that. Um, but the other thing I think to take away from this is, is not only do we have, you know, the, the knowledge-based workforce growing, but we also have inbound migration here into Phoenix and Scottsdale. And so I think that when this thing flips, that there's going to be a shortage of office space and we're in the office market and it's going to be in the situation where the industrial market is today with, with all the supply chain and logistics demand, you can't, find, you can't find industrial space. And I think that's gonna happen. I just don't know if it's gonna be two, three or four years down the line. So with that, I'll thank you and turn it over to anyone for questions. Mm. Betty, do you have any questions? Um, 
I kind of wanted to go back to that number you quoted and I've got to look at my notes now. You went through pretty quick. So you think about 60% of the workforce will be back in about three months. Three months after they feel safe. Okay, yep. after safe. Okay, yep. and then um, you think on average people will be back, will be in the office two to four times per week. Mm -hmm. And then you said something else after that. And I, if you could go back and repeat it, it was not on a slide. Yeah, it was talking sure. about what per se you think will be working from home. Well, uh, yeah. So work from home will double from six to 12 percent, somewhere in that range. So it's going to more okay. than double than than what it traditionally had been. COVID and the advances of, of you know, the internet and technology, sure. yeah, has allowed people to do that. But what, what, what we're finding and, and what employers are finding that for certain job functions, it's very easy to work from home, call centers, certain back office functions, but then there are other functions that really do need the collaboration, right? And so it really depends huh. on that. Um, but I think right now what you're going to see as employers go back to work that, that they're going to overcorrect. The CFOs are going to say, we don't need all the space. Everyone's working from home and they're going to cut their space. And this is why I think that in two to three years, you are going to see everyone go, oh my God, we need more space. And there's going to be a run on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I think you said something about the number of people in the workforce is going to um, grow. Yes. So the knowledge-based workforce will grow yeah, over the next it, five to 10 years. So you think that change from six to 12% isn't going to be particularly damaging because the workforce will have grown so much that we'll still have the need for additional space. 100%. And, okay. and, I, and, I, and to piggyback on that, I think that Scottsdale is going to get more than the, their fair share of that just due to inbound migration. Now, some of the people in the Rust Belt, they're going to feel it, right? But, but, oh, but yeah. I think we are going to be the, the benefactors of, of a lot of that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Really, really good information. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's uh, right. Lots of unknowns, but I think you're right. I think uh, we're going to see a pretty severe um, comeback, uh, dramatic. I'm even hearing folks talking about doing a lot more shared workspaces, and I don't know how long that trend will last either. So. Yeah, you know, I think I think the challenge is that people want flexibility, but they don't want to be told that they have to go in Tuesday. Thursday and Friday, right? They want to do it when they need to go in. And, mm -hmm. and that's going to dictate that, that they really, the employers are going to need to keep more office space than they, they think they are. Yep. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Peter. That was Thank great. Thank you. Very Thank nice. You. Thanks. Take care. All right, Mr. Millar, and it seems to be the end of our agenda. It is. And we have, do we have any public comment? I do not. See a public comment. Thank you. And then, um, Betty, any ideas about future agenda items? Um, I think it's what Rob talked about, some follow-up on everything that we're doing, um, especially with the new programs we're rolling out. Yep. You know, I, I would like data on how many different small businesses have we contacted. And I guess I'd like some information on, I'm going to say the success rate rather than the failure rate. <laughs> so that it, no, I'm going to be more positive. Um, so that if you've perhaps made contact with 200 businesses moving forward, how are they doing? Are we losing some, et cetera? I think that would be very good information. We need to take care of our small businesses, basically. And, and it looks like we're really doing a good job and I wanna make sure that we're retaining them because they're the heart and soul of the city. So that's the type of information I'd you know, like to see at the next meeting. Yep, great, thank you. All right then, um, if there's no further business, I will adjourn our committee meeting. Thank you very much, everybody.